Hey guys, Jay here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to code a simple web scraper in Python. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of programming concepts and how to use Python. As with all web scraping, you need to have a pretty good understanding of HTML. Web scraping involves reverse engineering a web page, so understanding HTML is necessary. The first thing you'll need to do is download the scraping library that we'll be using. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the request library with Beautiful Soup. There are other ways to scrape web pages with Python, but this is by far the most common method. To install the libraries, we need to type pip install requests and pip install Beautiful Soup 4. Here's the web page that we will be scraping. I own this website, and I will also throw a disclaimer out there to not scrape maliciously. Don't scrape web pages to steal data or to copy another website. Generally, if web scraping is not disallowed on the website's terms of service and you only send a request or two, you'll be fine, but don't accidentally DOS a server and get your IP banned. I am not responsible for anything you do with anything you learn in this video. All right, at the top of our script, we need to import our libraries, type import requests, and from BS4, import beautiful soup. Now save and run the script. If you don't get any errors, you have correctly installed the libraries. Congratulations. We can set up a variable to hold our URL, and then we can use the request library to send an HTTP request to get the HTML from the URL. And we will save the return value in a variable called response. We can convert this response to a beautiful soup object by declaring a new variable and setting it equal to beautiful soup and passing in the response object and telling beautiful soup that we want to use the HTML parser because we're parsing an HTML web page. We can then print all the HTML from this beautiful soup object by typing print soup. Now you can see that um, the text is a little bit hard to read. So if we want to, we can add dot prettify and beautiful soup will format the HTML for us so that the HTML is more readable. If you run this script, you can see that we get all the information from the page that we scraped. We can pull specific elements from the page by typing soup.title or soup.find and passing in title to return the first or the zeroth title element on the page. We can use soup.findAll and pass in A to get an array of all the anchor elements. Notice that this is an array and we can use square brackets and an index to pull any one item from this array. We can get a list of all the children of an element by using the dot contents or the parent of an element by using a dot parent. As you can see, this page has a lot of elements with the class of w3 hyphen card hyphen four. We can get an array of all the elements with a certain class by typing soup dot find all and passing in attributes equals a dictionary class and then the class we want to search for. We could also limit this to only div elements by including div as the first argument um, we're passing to this function. And finding elements based on their attributes works for any attribute. So you could get all the elements with a certain ID or even a custom HTML data attribute if that's what you wanted to find. So by default, when we print a beautiful soup object, it will print out the opening and closing tags along with the content inside. If you don't want that, you can print just the text by adding dot text to the end. Alternatively, we can get a specific attribute from an element by using .get and passing in the attribute we want to grab. As such, we could do .get href to get the hyperlink reference, or we could pass .get class to get the class attributes. And notice that if there are multiple class attributes, it actually returns an array of all the attributes instead of just a string. And it's also important to note that the dot find function returns a valid beautiful soup object, which means that we can call the find function on an object returned by the find function to get all the children. So this can be helpful when navigating a more complex web page. For example, if we only want to get the anchor elements that are inside the nav element, we can first grab the nav and then we can find all the anchors inside. I don't want to get too in depth in this video because it's really just an introduction, but I highly recommend that you read over the documentation. I'll put a link in the description and it's actually surprisingly good documentation. So if you're looking into web scraping, definitely read it over. Um, I'll be making more videos on Python and web scraping in the future. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you found this video informative, give the video a like so that more people see it. And if you found the video unclear or confusing, leave me a comment down below so I will know what to do better in the future. As always, have a great day. I'm out.